Ending the last gasp, East equaliser from Jude Bellingham, the brilliant Jude Bellingham, 2-2, but individual errors, one in particular from Pickford. Doesn't make many, by the way, but he's out of his box. He's trying to drill a little ball into the middle of the park, gets dispossessed. Tielemans sees the run across the, the, the face of the goal and he slides it beautifully in behind the incoming um, Pickford. But we're going to take your calls on all things we've seen. Wales is the big story. They miss out on the Euros in 2024 in Germany. 037172 Now let's hear from England manager Gareth Southgate. He's been speaking to talk sports, fake or others, following his side's draw at home at Wembley to Belgium. Gareth, it felt like a really positive end to what's been a really difficult camp. I saw the celebrations between yourself and Steve Holland when Jude Bellingham's goal went in. Was that a little bit of relief, delight? What was that? Well, um, delight because we felt our performance deserved at least a draw. Um, we knew with the profile of players that we had, we could be a little bit open. And um, it, it, yeah, it was a game where I thought our attacking play was very good. We created more chances than we, than we have for a long time. The use of the ball was excellent. Players that came on uh, had a really big impact. Um, but of course, with the much lower level of possession that Belgium had, they, they 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 nailed the chances that they created. So we were vulnerable on the transitions. Um, it wasn't easy for us. Their midfield Tielemans, he took up a position. We wanted to be brave. We turned the ball over in on the edge of their box a few times, and so we had the reward for that, where we should have scored. But then when they played through our press, he was free and that did cause us a problem. Yeah, Jared Bowen as well was a real bright spark, it felt tonight. He was really delighted with his performance. Felt he probably should have had a couple of goals himself. But bearing in mind the disappointment that he suffered um, not being able to go out to, to, to Qatar, how has he been this camp? Very good, really good. He, he looks as though... He's much more comfortable and confident in the environment. And um, yeah, I, I thought, I, look, I thought across the two games, there were lots of good individual performances. So um, it, it, real food, food for thought in a number of areas. Yeah, particularly in that striking area, because Ivan Tony said he wanted to score. He always backs himself. We know how confident he is, but he stepped up to that penalty and just, you know, cool and calm as we know he can be. But other areas of play must have delighted you as well. Yeah, his link play was very good, uh, and again we know that. You know, he's not he's not just a big guy that flicks the ball on. You know, he gets hold of the ball well uh, into his body. Um, he finds really nice passes, um, and his work without the ball for the team was excellent. So yeah, again a, a good night for him. Kobe Main, who got his chance and more than took it. I've just watched him holding the Player of the Match award, beaming from ear to ear. It feels like he's been the real bright spark of, of this camp at 18 years old. I know I asked you this question the other night, but after another fantastic performance, surely he's played his way into, uh, into Germany. Well, um, I'd be delighted if everybody that you're saying is going is fit for a start. So let's hope that we've got all those decisions to make. But yeah, really pleased with the way he played. Um, he's so... Uh, comfortable receiving under pressure he showed strength against some combative midfield players and you know beautiful bit of play in the lead up to the first goal and there are several moments like that when you play with him it's a little bit more open without the ball and there was evidence of that as well so as always we've got to get the right balance for the team but it's great to have a player like him as a as an option just a final thought on your overall thoughts from this camp, which we've talked about. It's been difficult, but what positives do you take from it? Well, a, a, a lot of individual positives. Um, I mean, I thought Declan Rice again tonight showed he's a world-class player. He, he rose to the challenge of being captain across the two games. He's been, for me, the standout. Um, we saw the impact again that Jude has that desire to keep driving to the end um, I think in Bowen and Gordon we've seen two wingers that have given us a different sort of option in Cobby we've seen a different sort of midfield player we've been able to see several defenders and, and have a clearer picture on that I thought Ben Chilwell defended really well tonight really dug in against a tough opponent um, James Madison coming on had a, a you know not as much football as he would have liked, but had a really big impact. And the two centre forwards have done well. So if we'd come out of it with two defeats, 
that, that would have been a real blow because I think the performance has been better than that. We, sh- we should have got something out of um, the Brazil game, but if anybody deserved to win it with the quality of chances, it's probably them. Tonight, I think on the quality of chances and the number of chances, we probably deserve to win, but we come out with a draw at the end, which I think is more than fair. And I'm going to get in trouble, but I do need to ask you about Wales. I'm just springing this on you. I told you it had gone to penalties. Unfortunately, Rob Page's side have been knocked out. They're not going to go to the Euros. They've lost on on penalties. Just want your immediate reaction to that, if possible. Well, really disappointed for Rob and um, Ian Mitchell, who works there, that we know really well. Um, Yeah, Rob's a super guy. They've done brilliantly to get so close, having lost such a generation of players. So, yeah, I'm... very disappointed for him. Thanks very much, Gareth. Let's be honest, he couldn't care less. Let's be brutally honest about that. I mean, he's got to answer that. He's got to toe the party line. They're, they're, you he's, know, a, he's a proper PR man. He no, is, uh... do you know what? He's brilliant in front of the press, and I love Gareth Southgate. He's, I think he's taken in the right direction. But, I mean, fair, fair play to face. He's got to ask that question. Yeah. But let's be brutally honest. As soon as that question I left his head, he he couldn't, all he's thinking about is Mainu alongside Rice. Yeah. Have, I, have I found... Sal- salivating over that. Have I found the answer? Mm. Mainu alongside Rice. Now, this boy has been exceptional, right? Yeah. And I know it's in the infancy of his career, in the infancy of his professional career, playing first-team games for Man United. Mm-hmm. But this boy has got something. Yeah, definitely. Coley. He, he, he's shown his... There, there's Maturity. Such a cool, the, the, do you know what it is? I'll tell you cool what. I saw, I saw this boy um, when I went away with England um, coaching on the 17s um, tournament uh, over in Luxembourg. Um, didn't do too well, but um, he was the standout player for me. Like he was just unbelievable. So he just you, takes... you coached him? No, I was part of the you're coaching part, part team. Of, okay, right. I didn't coach him. Like, no, yeah. no, but I'm saying you were part, part of the coaching. That... So I, that's the first time I see him, and I was like, "Wow, who is this?" And I knew he was, he was going to be because the way he plays, he's. I can imagine him playing like that when he was thirteen, mm. like. Good at receiving the ball, comfortable, take it on the back foot, go forward, could get past the play. I could just see he was playing like that all day. You could because he's not he don't rely on pace. He just he just knows where to be. He reads the game really well. And you could see that he had that. And you I, and then when I see him make his debut for Man United, I was like mm. and then he made that day, I was like, Wow, mm. he's doing the same thing that I know he can do in the Premier League. So he's just gonna be a consistent player. He's gonna be playing like that. It, I hope he goes on to go and emulate one of my favourite players in the world, um, Clarence Zadoff. Right, okay. Because high praise, but you got you got to compare it with something. No, right? no, but you got to go. You got to aim for. You got to aim high, yeah. right? But I'm not saying he look, he is Clarence Zadoff, but I just feel that he's got that power. He knows how to read the game, and he's a very intelligent person I, to I have on the, the pitch. The way he receives the ball, and the way he receives, he, can, yeah, he, yeah, he receives the ball comfortably under pressure. Yeah. Not a lot of players from a young age can do that, no. and he does that. And when I saw him live and training and see how he just dominates and controls a game, I just thought, yeah, this guy's on. He's, he's going all the way and he's going for big things. Well, our equaliser, so it's not, it's not came, surprising. it came from him, recognising there was a space, did, did a little shump, a shimmy and then moved the ball quickly and played the ball into Bellingham. Once that pass has broken, the lines, breaking the lines, then yeah. all of a sudden Tony's on his bike, Bellingham finds Tony mm-hmm. within seconds, not only gone from nearly just, in, just inside their half, within three passes, mm-hmm. sorry, two passes into Tony, We've got a penalty. Mm. This kid starts. I and think f- is the answer. The Sports Bar with Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy. Monday to Thursday nights from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.